I'm sick of doing the same exact thing every time I want to build a WPF MVVM application. I need to install my MVVM Essentials NuGet package, which includes ViewModel base, Command base, and stuff like that. I need to set up the .NET host, which isn't scaffolded out by default with the WPF template, even though all the ASP.NET templates have it. I guess just no one cares about WPF. I need to set up my app.xamma.cs, scaffold that out to show my main window, and I also like to create some folders for models, views, view models, etc. So that being said, I'm going to create a custom WPF MVVM project template so that I don't have to scaffold all of this out every single time. So I'm going to put this into my WPF tutorial solution where all my other WPF stuff is, and I'm just going to create a new project, just a WPF application. I'll call it the WPF MVVM template. I'll make this for .NET 5 and let's create that. And now in this project, I just need to set up everything I typically set up in a WPF application. So that includes my MVVM Essentials NuGet package. So let's grab that from NuGet, MVVM Essentials.WPF. And this just includes everything that I typically include in a WPF application, such as view model base, command base, navigation. That's a big one that's included in here. So this is definitely going to help set up our application. So we got that installed. Next up, we're going to scaffold out the app.xaml.cs. And this is going to have all the startup logic for our application. So I did say I want a .NET host in this application. So we're going to set that up here. And to do that, we are going to need another NuGet package. So let's go back there. And we're going to search for Microsoft extensions dot hosting and here we go let's install that and this will allow us to set up the dotnet host so we're going to have that in a field the i host let's import that and we will set up our host in the constructor so for our host all we're going to do is use the default builder so we can use host create default builder and this gives us some useful pre-configured defaults such as loading configuration values from an app settings.json. That's a big one that will show off, but we can continue to configure this builder and specifically we want to configure services. So these are going to be our services for dependency injection. And this takes an action, which is going to receive our services that we want to configure. So we'll do that configuration and then we'll build the host and put that into our host field. But there are some things I want to register in dependency injection right off the bat. So for example, let's add a singleton import that extension method. And this is gonna be for our main window, so we can just instantiate that. But we do wanna set the data context for this main window, and we want that to be our main view model. So let's go ahead and register our main view model in dependency injection as well. Just the main view model as the type, and import that from mvvmessentials.viewmodels. And now we just need that main view model down here. So to get that, we can register this main window using a callback function that takes in our service provider and we can use the service provider, which is gonna have the main view model registered and get required service for our main view model. And that'll resolve the main view model that we registered. So all good there, but the main view model needs a navigation store and a modal navigation store in order to be resolved. So let's register those. Those are stores. So we're gonna register those as singletons because they're gonna be our single source of application state. So we need the navigation store and the modal navigation store and these don't take anything in their constructors so we'll be able to resolve those so i think that's everything we need with our host now we are going to override the on startup method and display our main window from our on startup and to display our main window we're first going to have to resolve it from dependency injection so we can take our host services and get our main window and we're going to set that as the main window for our app and then we'll just do a main window dot show but actually, before we take these host services, we are going to have to start our host. So we can take our host and start it. And if we're starting it, that also means that when we exit our application, we're going to have to dispose of our host. So there we go. We should be good with managing that. And now if we're manually showing our main window from here, we're going to have to go into our app.xaml and get rid of the startup URI, which shows our main window.xaml on startup. We don't want that here because we're already doing it in our own startup method. If we left this here, we'd have two main windows and that is not what we want. I think we're good on dependency injection. Another thing I mentioned that's great about this default builder is that we get an app settings.json configured by default, but we're gonna have to create that file. So let's do that. Let's add a new item to our project, just an app settings.json. And we can throw some JSON settings in here. So we might have connection strings. Let's open that up with an object and we'll just call this default and we'll just say insert connection string 
So just scaffolding it out. Let's also scaffold out a non-connection string. We'll call it example and just give it a value of value. And then I'll demonstrate how to load those up in the app.zamba.cs. Next up, let's head into the main window and the data context for our main window is a main view model. So let's see what that has that we can bind to. It has a current view model, a current modal view model to display something in a modal, and then an is open property that'll tell us if the modal is open or closed. So let's hook into these properties on our main window. First, we're gonna have a content control, and the content for this is gonna be our current view model, which is on our main view model. And then we're gonna have to map our current view model to a view. So we can define some grid resources in here and we use data templates for that. So the data type will be our view model and we would map that to some kind of view in here. But we don't have view models right now and we don't have views either because this is just a template. We're not gonna have this anyways. So we just put a comment in here and then we'll just comment this out. But then we're also gonna have a modal for our current modal view model. So for a modal, I have a NuGet package for a custom modal control. Let's go ahead and use that. So let's install that. That is called simple modal.wpf. Let's install that. And now in here, we can have a modal import that namespace. We'll rename this to just custom. And on this, we can specify if it should be open or not. And that can just bind to is open on our main view model. We also want this to have a Z index of one. So that's above our content. And then inside here, the content for the modal is going to be a binding to our current modal view model, which I believe is what we called it on our main view model. There we go. And same thing here, we would need to define some kind of mapping from our view model to a view. And actually, this is an example project. This is a template. So maybe we should just have example views and view models. So we're gonna have some of those because I did wanna create these folders anyways. We want a views folder, a view models folder, probably a models folder as well. I also have commands, since I use class commands. And then I also have stores for application state. Uh, I also have services for any kind of database interaction, API calls, or business logic. And then I have components as well for any kind of reusable UI components. So kind of going overboard here, but I do wanna throw in an example view. Since this is a template, you can always just delete it or change it to whatever you need. So we'll call this the home view. And we'll just have a text block in here and we'll say, welcome to the WPF MVVM template. And actually, I'm gonna cut this out and instead, we're gonna have a binding to the welcome message and that's gonna be on a home view model. So in our view models folder, let's create that home view model. This will inherit from view model base. So we implement I notify property changed and we're just gonna have a string property and we want this to be the welcome message because that's what we're gonna bind to. And that's just gonna have our welcome message. So this is a pretty simple example, but now we can do this mapping in our main window. So we're gonna need our view models namespace and our views namespace. And we are gonna map our home view model type to a home view. Let's also rename our main window while we're here, application name. But this should be everything for the main window so we can get out of here. And now in our app.zamba.cs, when we start the application, we wanna go to our home view. So I'm glad I added all this so that we can show how to register view models and navigation services in dependency injection. So on startup, I want a navigation service. So import that from MVVM essentials, and I'm gonna get this from dependency injection. So resolving it, and I want this to be a navigation service that'll take us to the home view model. So import all that. And then using that navigation service, I'm gonna do my application's initial navigation by just calling navigate and that should take us to the home view model. So we're gonna have to register all of this in dependency injection. So let's add a singleton for a navigation service to the home view model. And in order to register this, we're gonna have to register our iNavigation store, which we actually did not do. We just registered our navigation store instance, didn't map it to the iNavigation store type. And I actually don't wanna do that because the modal navigation store is an iNavigation store as well. So what we can do in this add singleton is we can just register this with a factory function and pass in the navigation store that we want. So I'm gonna create a function for that, create home navigation service, generate that. So we'll instantiate our navigation service and get our navigation store from our service provider. And we just want the regular navigation store, not the modal navigation store, because obviously we don't want our home view model to be inside of the modal at least in this case. And then we also need to resolve a create view model delegate for the home view model. So this is just a function that is used in the navigation service to create our home view model, but we did not register this type in dependency injection. 
let's go ahead and do that. So that can be a singleton as well to create a home view model. And this is kind of weird to register. So we are registering a function that creates a home view model. So to create that home view model, I'm just gonna resolve that from dependency injection. So let's get our service provider as a parameter here. And now from this, we need to return a function that creates our home view model. So a function that returns a home view model. And to get that home view model, we're just gonna use our services and resolve a home view model. And if we're resolving a home view model, that means we have to register one. Now view models, I register as transient. So they get created and destroyed throughout the application's lifetime not singletons that will live forever. I talk more about this in my navigation series as it relates to disposing view models, but we are just gonna register a home view model and we should be good to see this. All right, there we go, there's our message. So we did do that navigation. Let's go ahead and center that and make the font bigger. Awesome, how exciting. But the last thing I wanna show off is how to get settings from our app settings.json. So what we can do is we can take our host services and resolve an I configuration from Microsoft.extensions.configuration. And now let's get some configuration values so we can take that configuration and let's get a connection string. So we call it ours default. And then let's also get our example value so we can just get a value. We want it as a string. And the key for that, I believe we just called it example. Let's check that. Yup, so we should get value and we should get insert connection string as our connection string. So let's put breakpoints here and make sure this works. And we get null and null, perfect. So it didn't work actually. And what we have to do to fix that is take this app settings.json and take a look at the properties. And we need to set copy to output directory as either copy always or copy if newer. I think copy if newer should be good enough for now. And that'll just copy it to our bin so that our application can read it. Let's try this again. And there we go, we got our connection string and we got our example value. Perfect. I think I'll delete this from the template though. Not really necessary. So I think that's everything before I extract this to a template. Although one thing I feel like I should show off is how to display a modal. So let's see how fast we can do this. Let's create a new view model. How about the about view model? Inherit from view model base. And this is gonna have a command to close the modal of course. So import I command. So we'll set up this command in the constructor. We'll set the close command to a new navigate command. So that's part of my MVVM essentials. And this takes a navigation service. We'll call this the close modal navigation service and take that through the constructor. Let's also get another property on here for some information. So the author is singleton Sean. So now let's create a view for this, a user control, the about view. And we just make this a stack panel and we're gonna have a text block for the author. So we'll bind to author, we'll make this bigger. And then underneath here, we'll have a button that is gonna bind to our close command. It'll say close, we'll get some padding, we'll get some margin to the top. We can also horizontal align center and vertical align center, that should look okay. And this is also gonna go in the middle. So we should get some margin on here so we're not up against the edges. We'll do 20. So view model and view are good. Let's do this mapping with a data template. So mapping the about view model to an about view. And now we just need to show that about view. And that is gonna be done with a button on our home view. So on our home view model, let's get a command on here for the navigate about command. Set that up in the constructor, a navigate command again. And we'll take an about navigation service through the constructor. And now for the view, Let's just grab that same exact button that we have on the about view. So copy that and put that onto the home view, except this is the navigate about command and the content for the button will be show about. And then I also want a stack panel here as well. And we'll move the alignment to that. All right, so that should be good, at least for the view models and views. Now we just need to update everything in our app.xamma.cs. So we can't just resolve our home view model here now because we need an I navigation service. So let's create a function to create a home view model so we can pass that navigation service in. So just instantiate the home view model and we'll resolve an I navigation service. We want this to be a navigation service that'll take us to the about view model. And if we want to resolve this, we're going to have to register it. So let's register an about view model. Let's put this creation into a function. We're also going to have to register a create view model for an about view model, but we can do the same thing where we just resolve that from dependency injection since we register it. And then we need a navigation service for an about view model and that'll go into a function. And now same kind of stuff as our home view model. So let's copy the navigation service instantiation for the home view model 
as the about view model one, except this is gonna have to change a lot. So it's for the about view model and our navigation store is gonna be a modal navigation store because we want our about page to be in a modal. And then for creating the about view model, gonna be similar again, except extension about view model, of course. And this is gonna be a navigation service for the home view model. So one thing to point out is that this could grow a lot as we set up more views and view models. So I have talked previously in other videos about how you can split your dependency injection registration into extension methods in order to prevent your app.xaml.cs from just growing infinitely. So that might be something to consider if you're interested in splitting all of this up. Anyways, let's try this out. Whoops, and I forgot a semicolon here. Too much JavaScript lately. All right, so let's show the about page. And there we go, there's our modal. And we can close it. Ooh, except that does not work. And the reason it doesn't work is because the navigation service that we passed into our about view model is a navigation service to a home view model. But that's not actually what we want to do. We want our navigation service to just close the modal. So I don't know why I passed that in. We want this to be a close modal navigation service, which we can just register in dependency injection as a singleton. And that just takes the modal navigation store, which we have registered. So try this again. And there we go, that works. So now finally, let's move this into a reusable template, which was really the goal of this anyways, but took a little bit to set up. But if we come up here to project and export template, we want this to be a project template. And our project is, I have so many projects in here, this is kind of bad. But the WPF MVVM template, let's select that. So it's the template for scaffolding out WPF MVVM applications. So it includes MVVM essentials, Microsoft hosting, and view model view examples. We don't have an icon or a preview, but I'm gonna export this to a zip, which I'll have available for downloading in the description. So let's do this. And all right, it did it, I think. And it also automatically imported it into my own Visual Studio. So let's create a new project. And if I search for WPF MVVM template, here we go, we got it right here. So let's select that. I'll call this the WPF MVVM template example and let's create it. All right, so we got all of our folders. It also automatically applies our namespace so we don't have the old WPF MVVM template, which I kind of expected or I had hoped, I wasn't exactly sure. But yeah, we can set this as the startup project and run this. And there we go, same thing, looking good. And now all we'd have to do is customize this to build our own application. So we got everything we need. We got the WPF MVVM essentials for view model base, command base, navigation, extremely helpful. We got our app.xaml.cs all scaffolded out and we even got an app settings.json so that we can add some configuration values. So feel free to use this to build your own application. Feel free to extend this into your own WPF MVVM template with anything else that you wish to have scaffolded out. But I think this is the essentials. I'm excited to use this. So link will be in the description. If you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video or are enjoying the channel, consider becoming a member. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.